This small brown butterfly, called the twin spot skipper, is very well camouflaged into the ground. Like the majority of our grass skipper species here in South Florida, the twin spot skipper is overall very dull brown color. Despite the overall color pattern and appearance looking very similar to many other South Florida grass skippers, it's actually one of the easiest to tell apart because of the good view, like right now, of the underside of the hind wings shows one white spot at the top and then two white spots at the bottom that are very close together. No other species where I live has this distinct pattern, and that's the reason why this is called twin spot skipper. I couldn't tell whether this was a southern black or an Everglades racer due to the horrible angles as we are in range overlap between these two subspecies. However, it was still incredible to watch this racer taking advantage of the limited sun rays during the winter time and basking in the little area of heat in between the shadows. It actually let us get very close and did not slither away as we walked off. In my opinion, the limpkin is actually one of South Florida's most interesting bird species. There's nothing else like it in the whole world. Despite it surprisingly being a close relative to both the cranes and rails, its distinctive appearance and behavior earn it its own family. During early morning and late evening, the species will make a very loud crying call. And during the day, these guys hunt exclusively on mollusks, using their long, hard beak to break the shells off things like apple snails and mussels. One of my favorite habitats to go looking for insects in South Florida are dark wooded hammocks and cypress swamps, something I actually might make a full video on in the future. Those strange habitats are home to hoverfly species like this stubby hoverfly that you can't find anywhere else, as well as strange looking dragonflies like this phantom darter, which really earned its name. This species is active during early morning and late evening and spend most of the day perched vertically over branches hanging over the water or ground. I don't know how to explain it, but it almost has a creepy presence when it's perched. Another amazing odonate species that you could find in these kinds of habitats are spreadwings. Here in Palm Beach County, these, or blue striped spreadwings, are by far the most common species and the only one I see regularly. The majority of the animals you'll find in South Florida cypress swamps and wooded hammocks is just like anything else you'd find in South Florida, like this pileated woodpecker, a quite common species of woodpecker that's taken over many different kinds of habitats. Due to ivory-billed woodpecker being declared extinct, this is now officially the largest North American woodpecker. Just as a showing at how diverse habitat can be, this was actually filmed only a few hundred feet away from the entrance to that tropical cypress swamp habitat I was filming at earlier. This was actually a very interesting interaction that I was filming, as there are two species of milkweed butterfly, the soldier and the queen, both feeding on this tropical milkweed plant at the same time, as well as there also being a mating pair of milkweed assassin bugs, which are great control for milkweed pests like aphids. This right here is a slough crayfish, which I'd say is a great find, except it didn't take much to find it. It was just sitting in the middle of the sidewalk, just doing nothing. And at the time, I had no clue what it was doing. But after some research, it actually appears that it is basking. Just like a reptile would, it actually seems to be soaking up the heat out of this asphalt that has been collecting in the sunlight. This record was many firsts for me. Not only was the slew crayfish a lifer species for me, but it was also my first time ever seeing a crayfish of any kind in Florida, and my first time seeing a crayfish completely isolated from any nearby water. An interesting fact about crayfish is that they could actually spend days out of the water, and this amazing adaptation has let them travel longer distances on land and colonize freshwater areas that might be farther from other sources of water. 